what we might hear from the Palestinians at the UN General Assembly and how that might impact peace talks with Israel. We're joined by Fadi Salamin. He's a senior fellow at the American Security Project. It's a think tank here in Washington created to develop an American national security vision and strategy for the 21st century. Uh, let me just get your sense of what you believe uh, Mahmoud Abbas will say in his address. I think we're at the point where Abbas has uh, negotiated for more than 20 years and the negotiations yielded absolutely nothing from his standpoint. So he's telling the world that this is where I am today. I need you to help me force the Israelis to accept a timeline for ending the occupation. The problem is the same problem, which is the Israeli occupation in the West Bank and Gaza. That has not changed. Negotiations did not change that at all. So this is what he's basically calling for. On top of that, I, I believe he's going to ask for help to rebuild Gaza because of the last wave of uh, violence. You had a huge amount of destruction, a huge toll of casualties. So there's a huge need of uh, reconstruction. So that's, I think, these two issues will be how to address ending the occupation and how to address rebuilding uh, Gaza. Earlier this week, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was, uh, was speaking about this issue, and he said, you know, we can't keep going back in and rebuilding. We can't keep going back and rebuilding. And yeah. I think what he's also saying is there doesn't need to be this. Um, uh, how do we, but the, the description we just got in Nathan's story and sort of what you're saying as well is, uh, the Palestinians seem to be in this box, uh, not just in Palestine, but they're at the UN. Mm -hmm. How do they break out of it? We have, there's only one way out of this. And in my opinion, we need elections on the Palestinian side and we need elections on the Israeli side. On the Israeli side, you have a prime minister who's very concerned about his premiership, that's his number one priority. Israelis are frustrated with him. Israelis are interested in, in peace and he's not delivering that. He's focusing on staying in power. Much of the international community is actually very frustrated with Benjamin Netanyahu. I've had conversations with leaders and um, heads of states who relay the same message in private but cannot say it publicly. They don't trust him, they don't believe his motives, and they do not believe that he is interested in moving forward towards a peace uh, agreement. So we need elections on the Israeli side. On the Palestinian side, we have a weak president that has been there for 10 years. His term expired. He needs also to call for elections to show a unified Palestinian front so that there is a new leadership, there's new blood that can show the world that we can move forward towards a, a solution with the Israelis. At this point, the way the Israelis or the international community looks at the current president is that he's a weak president that cannot offer them anything. The only thing he can offer is just show up, and that's really what, is he doing, what he's doing at the United Nations. He's just showing up, and he's trying to show that he has some leverage. He does not, unfortunately, have much leverage over the West Bank. He doesn't have any leverage over Gaza. Forget about what they're saying. They have an agreement. The people who control the ground in Gaza is Hamas. It is not Abbas. And even if they do an agreement, at the end of the day, the guns are in Hamas's hands. They're not in Abbas's hands. So, the only way to, to get rid of this uh, obstacle is to have Palestinian presidential elections. We've talked a little bit about Abbas. Obviously, Israel will get their shot at speaking as well. How do you think they'll respond to Abbas, and what are we likely to hear from them in New York? Look, Netanyahu, his song is known. He says Palestinians have to choose between peace and Hamas. That's Everybody knows the song. Nobody believes it. Nobody wants to hear it because what he did for one for 50 days, he pounded Gaza with weapons day after day, killed 2,000 people, destroyed, as you saw what he destroyed. And the next day, the very next day, went for a huge land grab and then sang the same song. Palestinians have to choose between Hamas and peace. Nobody believes Netanyahu when he does what he does and the next day talks peace. So he has to show serious, serious efforts towards uh, ending the occupation. That's, the only, that's what people are asking of him. Show us what are you prepared to do other than say, I'm ready to talk because you've talked the talk. Now you have to walk the walk. End the occupation. That's the way to do it. Let me ask one final question before we move on. Um, for 50 days, as you pointed out, the world's attention was on this conflict. Then there's Iraq, Syria, ISIS or ISIL, however you want to describe them, You've got Ebola. Mm -hmm. All of that seems to crowd this issue off the front page. Mm -hmm. um, has that hurt? Absolutely. And it goes back to the issue of leadership. I believe the fact that we have a weak president in Palestine 
has created, and the fact that the Palestinians have not been able to unite themselves between Fatah and Hamas has created a Palestine fatigue almost. People are not interested in hearing uh, what Abbas and Hamas agreed on for the 10th or 20th time, and then because they expect they're going to revoke it again. So yes, absolutely. And then you have serious issues. ISIS is a very serious concern uh, in the Middle East. You have crazy fundamentalists who are gaining weapons and momentum and money and are controlling territories. So the world's attention, including that of the Arab world, is turning away towards f confronting ISIS. Ebola is a serious issue. Uh, Liberia, Guinea, the, the World Health Organization says by within January, we could 1.4 million people could be infected. So yes, absolutely, the Palestinian issue has suffered on the account of all these uh, you know, world, uh, world issues. But I do believe that we also have a part to play in this, and that is the lack of leadership. You have young Palestinians who are smart, brilliant, or who could contribute to creating a Palestinian state, who have been blocked by the current leadership because they are basically you know, old and insecure, and they do not want to give a chance for, for others to contribute towards creating a Palestinian state. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming in. Certainly appreciate it.